The diagonal on the right show a part of the curve of y plus x squared equal to 4, and PR is the tangent to the curve at point Q13. Tangent to the curve means that at this point, they have the same gradient and they only touch one point of the curve. So now we're going to look at the point P, R, and S. So P is basically here, which is the y-intercept of the line. But do we have the equation of the line? Not yet. R, R is the x-intercept of the line. So we still need to have the equation of the line first. S is basically the y-intercept of the curve. Do we have the equation of the curve? Yes. The equation of the curve is y equal to negative x squared plus 4. We know, even to find the y-intercept, make x is equal to 0. So when x equal to 0, y equal to 4. So now we know the coordinate of s is going to be 0, 4. So we fill up with the data first. So in order to find the equation of the straight line, first we need to know what is the gradient. But as we mentioned before, if this is a tangent to the curve, at this point, they will have the same gradient as the curve. So now we look at the equation first. We have y plus x squared equal to 4. We change the standard form first. We move the x squared to the right-hand side, become y is equal to negative x squared plus 4. And then we know in order to find the gradient of the curve, in the last chapter, we can just use the differentiation as a master key to find the gradient functions. Once we have the master key, we can able to find the gradient of any point, right? So we, want, we are curious about what is the gradient at point x equal to 1. So we substitute 1 into the equations, we have negative 2. So now we know the gradient of the line is eventually negative 2. So we're going to use the formula y minus y1 equal to m bracket x minus x1 to construct the equation of the line, like this. So we're going to pick one of the point, which is q, 1, 3. So y minus y1 equal to the gradient x minus x1. Then after that, we can just expand the bracket and rearrange it to become y is equal to mx plus c. Now we have the equation of the line, then we can find the y-intercept and x-intercept of the line. We know when y-intercept of the line, x must be equal to 0. So if we make our x equal to 0, we have y equal to 5, then we found our coordinate for p, which is 0, 5. Then we fill up the data in the graph, then now we want to find r. r is the x-intercept of line. x-intercept, we know y must be 0. If we solve the equation, we have x equal to 2.5. So now we can update the data into the graph, equal to 2.5. We found our P, R, and S. So now we go for question B, the area of the shattered regions. So the area of the region is a small part here that is bounded in between the curve and the line. So we're going to bound it to the x-axis first. From the line, like usual, we're going to draw a line, right? Remember, we draw a line. But is there anybody blocking you? Yes, the curve is blocking you. If the curve is blocking you, we can say that we are going to find the integration that are bounded to the x-axis from the line minus whoever is blocking you. For here, it's going to be the curve. But there's one more thing that we need to know is what are the boundary. So the boundary we know is going to be from 0 to the q coordinate here. So Q here is eventually 1. So we can say it's from 0 to 1 because the Q coordinate is 1. So we can just write down the idea, the area of the line minus the curve from 0 to 1 that is bounded to the x-axis. But what's the equation for the line? We know it's just negative 2x plus 5. What's the equation for the curve? It's 4 minus x squared. Since now we have x and integrating with respect to x, now we can just continue by integrations. Power increased by 1, divided by new power like usual. Then we're going to take the upper limit minus the lower limit like this. Then after you compute in your calculators, then you have the answer of 4 minus 11 over 3, and up you have 1 over 3 units square. So this 1 over 3 units square represents the area bounded in, the, in between the straight line and the curve. And we are done for question B. Now we look at question C. They ask us to find the generated volume in terms of pi when the region bounded by the curve. So usually for this kind of questions, we're going to make shading first. So if we know they are bounded along the curve, so we're going to shed the curve first. Then after that, they say it's the y-axis, so we're going to highlight the y-axis first. And then they say the straight line parallel to the x-axis. 
straight line that parallel to x axis will be the horizontal line. Because when we have parallel, it means that they are going to the same direction, same gradient. x axis is a horizontal line. So now we have a horizontal line, but they say we're going to pass through the point Q. So we have a line like this, that going through the point Q. So can you see that? Where are all the shading going towards? All of them are bounded in these regions here, right? So we're going to say that they are bounded in these regions. So basically we are finding the volume that of this curve, this region, that going to revolve around the y-axis. So if they revolve, you will have something like this, right? When they revolve, this is something that you're going to see because they are going to turn 360 degree. So this region is going to revolve around the y-axis. After they revolve, this is something like this, right? So now we can say that the formula of the revolution is going to be the integration of the are revolved around the y-axis, so it's dy. Then in the middle here must be the circles, right? It must be an area of a circles. But how do we find the radius of circles? The circle, it will tell us from the x value. So you're going to have the pi x squared. But what is the limit? The limit is going to be bounded from 3 to 4. Because they're going to the y-axis, right? It's from 3 to 4. So we're going to write down something like this. Pi x squared dy from 3 to 4. But the thing here is, we are integrating respect to y. But here we have x. We need to substitute x with y. So as we know here, we can just find x squared is equal to 4 minus y. So like this, we have the equations. And we're going to make x squared as our subject. We have 4 minus y. Then we're going to substitute back into our equations. So now we are going to go y. We have the variable of y. We are integrating respect to y. So like usual, 4y minus power increased by 1 divided by new power from the limit 3 to 4. Something like this. Then we're going to use the upper limit minus the lower limit. Substitute the 4 into the y and substitute the 3 into the y. And if you use calculators, you will have the answer of 8 minus 7.5. So in the end, you have 0 0.5 pi unit cube. So don't forget, volume we have the power of 3. And we are done for these questions. Question 11. Given a curve with a gradient function of px squared plus 6x, where p is a constant, so it means that this is just the gradient function, but not the equation of the curve. Meanwhile, they say y is equal to 24x minus 30 is a line that is tangent to the curve at point 2q. So it's quite difficult if you don't have any graphical illustrations. So let's draw our curve. Imagine that now we have a curve and there's a line that is tangent to the curve, but this line has the equation of 24x minus 30 at the point of 2q. So don't forget, when it's a tangent, it means that they have the same gradient or parallel to the curve at that particular point. So what's the equation of the line again? It's just 24x minus 30. As we know, y is equal to mx plus c. So 24 is our m, which is the gradient of the line but since we know if they say tangent, it means that the gradient at that particular point of the curve is also same. Then we can say that the gradient of the curve at point 2 is also 24. So how to find the gradient of the curve again? We can just using the gradient function that they provide to us, which is px squared plus 6x. But since we know when point is equal to x equal to 2, our gradient is 24. So we can say that our gradient is 24 when our x is eventually 2. So we substitute in like this. And now we can just solve for p. 2 squared is 4, so we have 4p plus 12 is equal to 24. 12 go over left hand side, we have 24 minus 12 equal to 4p. So 4p must be equivalent to 12. So p must be equal to 3. So we found, we found what is the value of p, which is just 3. So now we are going to look at what is the value for Q. If we have one of the point, then we can just substitute into the equation of a line or a curve to find the partner of it. We can just substitute our X coordinate, which is 2, into the equations to find Q. Because this is X, this is Y. So when Y equal to Q, X must be equal to 2. If you solve the equations, we have q equals to 18 and we are done for these questions. 
Hey, if you have any questions or would like to see any kind of video, do leave your comments below and let me know. If you want to support us so that we could make more videos like this, the simplest way is just by sharing the video with your friends. Click the like buttons and consider subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.